Time to start packing. And rearrange it all so you can get the cooler in there. Metal detecting gear. Photography gear. No room for that in the back. I guess it's going in with the kids. Can't fit another thing in there. I like. We're gonna make it fit. Maybe, just maybe, there's two in. Fingers crossed. Ha! You girls comfy? Yeah. yeah. Ready for a five hour trip? No. Jen takes her camping seriously. <laughs> Way up there on the top of that mountain, there's a really cool little shack. So I uh, set up and took a shot of it here. All right, so the tents are set up, mattress are blown up, sleeping bags unfurled. We are ready to go. You can see I've got the uh, double high queen mattress in mine. I'm roughing it this weekend. <laughs> Wife and the two girls can sleep in the three man and uh, I'll take the Taj Mahal here. <laughs> so this is how. <laughs> so you're gonna melt the cheese that way? We're getting the heat to kind of come up and over. <laughs> Whoa, it's kind of very ghetto. But... So I just got out of the tent and uh, I thought there were partridge taking off. It was turkeys. There was like 13 of them, uh, little ones, and they all flew. And then I didn't realize what they were until the mother, which was the last one to take off. And they just flew up into this field up here. So I've got the camera and I'm going to see if I can get a picture or something up here. So I walked up to the top field here. I stood here for 10 minutes. I didn't see anything. And then all of a sudden they started moving. They're right here in the grass. And they took off. Mm -hmm. I took one step, two of them flew. So let's see what happens if I, I walk out into the field with this phone on. There they go. Oh, there she goes. I don't know if we could see that on the phone, but the hen just flew across. She was in a tree up over there. I gotta go, I'm gonna sneak through here. Then we'll have eyes on the slower field without actually going out into it. Oh, no, there she is right there. She's right there. She's right there. So we got a picture of a young one, but the mother just laid down right there. She's there, but I know if I get any closer, she's just going to fly away. She's hiding. She laid down. Yeah, so eight of them just flew. 
nine. <laughs> I think there's more of them in here, but you'll never see them. Oh, they're up in the trees there now. There's Mama up in the tree. And there's a baby just behind her. Right there. So I followed those turkeys about 150 meters across the field here guys, which isn't too bad. They get a chance to practice their hiding skills, I get a chance to practice my hunting skills, and it doesn't stress them out too bad. Um, I didn't realize until not too long ago, we haven't had a lot of turkeys around here, just in the last few years they've started, and I'm three hours from home right now, so, but we, we are getting them at home as well. I didn't realize that turkeys could fly as well as they do. I thought they could just, you know, kind of like chickens, but uh, no, turkeys can fly and they can fly well. <laughs> Call me silly for being a bush guy for 40 years and not knowing that, but we don't have turkeys around here. I just figured, yeah, they, they don't fly that well. Well, that one sure did. I am on vacation at my friend Jen's, The Wild Yam, on YouTube, and uh, I'm just checking out her property. She's got uh, 180 acres, I think, here. And uh, there are all kinds of old fence lines here. Uh, um, the deed to their property says 1895, and there was activity before that here. So I'll show you guys. There's a big field out here that we can do, and there's a bunch of logging trails and stuff through the maple forest. Um, it looks and sounds really promising. So let's see if we can get a metal detecting video out of this trip as well. So there are three cleared fields on the property. There's uh, this one here we're looking at, one up behind those trees, and then another one down behind the vehicle. And then all kinds of bush area that we can, uh, trails and old logging roads and stuff, uh, probably about 100 acres worth back through here that we can go through. So first find on Jen's property is an old square nail, so that's a good sign for age. So I found this spot last night, guys, and uh, it looks a little suspicious to me because we've got rocks here that look like it could have been a foundation on the outside here. You got another pile of rock right here in the middle, and then we have the fence line that comes down here. So was this a little shed or a blacksmith thing, or I don't know, is it nothing? But uh, it's definitely an indent like a, like a cellar would be. You guys aren't missing much. I'm digging a bunch of square nails here. We were down the fence line. Um, that's probably the tiniest square nail I've ever dug, though. We're moving through the field, and we're going to go up uh, and hit some logging trails now behind the camp. So here's the first logging trail, and I'm literally two feet down it, and I got a decent signal here. And it's a 22 casing, an old one. And the next hole is a 22 shell that wasn't fired. Still got the lead in it. Really cool find, guys. Actually, I thought it was just uh, going to be another nail, but that's a suspender buckle. Uh, we're missing a tooth here on the left side, but you can see there's a bit of a design on it, and that's what it is. Really cool, really old. So we're uh, just detecting Jen's bush trail here and I wanted to show you guys, she kindly pointed out this is poison ivy and here is strawberry. So you can see the strawberry is much more serrated and the poison ivy, both leaves of three, but uh, that's poison ivy so take a good look at that sucker and memorize it and you don't want to lay down on that stuff. So that's uh, field strawberry and over here we have barren ground strawberry. So there's completely different looking plant over here as well. All have leaves of three, but uh, that's the sucker there that you want to avoid. So we've got a blackback woodpecker here. He was just five feet away from us. He was so curious. Um, Jen's got a tree here with service berries in it, and she thinks he wants those. But uh, the, the blackback have the yellow top on their head, so. So Jen tricked me. She just wanted to come back here to metal detect, but she really wanted to check her trail cameras. <laughs> so if you guys like trail cam stuff like I do, uh, Wild Yam on YouTube does a lot of that same kind of stuff. So she's got seven cameras out right now. And on this one here, she said she's got a fox. So there's always cool stuff on Jen's channel. Yeah, and I just did a recent review on my Browning Strike Force HD Pro, so feel free to check it out. So there it is, guys. What you'd pretty much expect from an 1890s farm. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, pieces of wire and some staples for fencing, some old flat pieces, and then a whole bunch of square nails, and a little bit more modern stuff, some caps, 
22 shells, nuts and bolts. And then the only cool thing, this old suspender clip. There it is, the clip, and uh, I'm gonna keep that one. Well, DM says she doesn't want it, so I'll throw it in with all my old goodies. So I still stand by this uh, old manual mirror lens, 500 millimeter guys, as one of the most fun lenses you can bring on a trip. We're in my friend uh, Jen's field here, and there's everything. Um, plant life, there's milkweed, so we've seen uh, admirals and monarchs, um, lots of different moths, uh, bumblebees, all kinds of critters, and then there's flowers, buttercups, daisies, brown-eyed Susans, everything. And uh, this lens here will focus down to under between five and six feet. So it's perfect for butterflies and skittish little things like that. I'll show you guys some images. And uh, so what we've got is a 1.4 teleconverter on here on a 500 millimeter lens on the full frame A7R3. So that's 700 millimeters.